going to be in the gym, it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with the lingo. So let's dive into the most common terms you're likely to run into on your fitness journey. Number one, flexibility training. Flexibility training is essentially stretching. In this type of training, the exercise is aimed at specific muscles, tendons, or muscle groups, where you flex the muscle or tendon in question in order to gain elasticity. Stretching can help increase range of motion, prevent pulled muscles, cramps, and is a good warm-up exercise to do at the start of your workout. Number two, reps. Reps means repetitions. So a rep is the number of times you perform a certain exercise. If you're doing dumbbell curls and you do five of them in a row, you've done five reps. Number three, sets. A set is a group of reps. So if you do five reps five times with a brief rest period between each group, you've done five sets. Number four, strength training. Strength training involves exercises geared towards building muscle size and strength. So any weightlifting, including free weights and cable machines, would be strength training. Number five, resistance. Resistance refers to the amount of weight you're working with. This can be your body weight, if you're doing exercises like pull-ups, or the amount of weight you're using if you're using free weights or cable machines. Number six, burning. Burning refers to the burning feeling you get in your muscles during strength training. As you work, your muscles are actually breaking them down. So this feeling is caused by a buildup of waste within the muscles, and a good sign that it's time to give your muscles a break so that they can take time to rebuild. Number seven, aerobic training. Aerobic training is another word for cardio, running, swimming, cycling, or using the crank machine. Any exercise geared at getting your heart rate up and keeping it up. Number eight, HIT. HIT stands for high intensity interval training. This means you exercise at full speed for a brief period of time, followed by a brief period of rest before you repeat. Number nine, functional training. The goal of functional training is to prepare the body for day-to-day -day activities. Exercises that are based off of common activities may be built into functional training routine. Functional training may be a good choice of exercise while rehabbing after a surgery or an injury. Number 10, core training. Core training is most often times thought of as training the abdominal muscles. While this is true, it can also be thought of as any exercise that works your body's center of gravity. Any exercise that works muscles connected to the pelvis, spine, or rib cage can be considered core workouts. Number 11, balance. Balance workouts aim to strengthen muscles used to keep you upright. This includes your core muscles and legs. Number 12, mind-body. Mind-body exercises are exercises that involve an emphasis on deep concentration in order to complete deliberate movements. Yoga, Tai Chi, and Pilates are example of mind-body exercises. Number 13, circuit training. With circuit training, your workout consists of a collection of exercises where your goal is to move from exercise to exercise with minimal rest between each set. In some fitness centers, you may notice a dedicated area for circuit training that features a collection of machines and fitness equipment along with some type of signal, often a light, that indicates when it's time to move to the next workout station. You'll learn more terms and phrases as you go deeper into this fitness world but knowing these will be good as you get started. 